All right, so this is 13.1, section 13, chapter 13, section 1. Um, tonight you're doing page 578, 1 through 63 odd. Okay, so we're doing 13, 1, 5, 7, page 578, 1 through 63 odd in the green book. All right, so when we started the year, we started with equations like this. This is what we call a linear equation. Why is it linear? Because uh, it makes a line. How do we know it's going to be linear? Okay, how do we know that this is linear, Mark? Uh, because the x is not to the, I guess, second power. Right, x is to the first. first power. Good. So to solve it, to solve the linear equation, we get x alone, add 10 to both sides, divide both sides by 5, and we get x equals 2. Most of the time, there's one solution, right? When I have a quadratic equation, do I get x alone? Do I? No. To solve it? Okay, so how do we solve with a quadratic equation? What do we do? Yep. I see a hand over here. Harrison? We factor it, and we use the zero product property. Do you guys remember that? We factor it, and we use the zero product property. So what can we factor out? And we get x times x minus 5. Set them both equal to 0. <coughs> x equals 0, and x equals 5. Okay, questions? Okay, how do we know it's a, um, it's a, well, how do I know that I can, what makes it a quadratic here? Yep. If x is, set, is not set to 0, No, what makes it a quadratic? We said we know it's linear if x is to the first power. So what makes it a quadratic equation? Um, Edward? X is squared, okay? And how do we solve that? Through zero product property, or we're going to learn multiple ways in this chapter, okay? Um, if I had a cubic function, how many solutions do you think there might be? Three. Three. All right. So, standard form of the equation is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are integers, Okay? So in this case, how might I um, get this to standard form? How might I get this to standard form? Somebody other than this front row. Okay, Jacob? Subtract 36 from both sides, right? And then we set it equal to zero. Uh, the next step, Mark? Factor four. And we're left with 4 times x squared, minus four. x squared minus 9. And then, am I factored completely? Mm -hmm. So what do I need to do? Uh, I don't need to do that. What? Oh. Uh, then x plus 3, x minus 3. Break down the, the difference of squares there. Now, you're right, we could have divided out that 4. We didn't have to. We could leave it there. It, it just made no difference to us. Remember when I'm using the zero product property, I never set 4 equal to 0 because it can never be a 0. The only things I'm looking for are the variable factors. Those are the ones I set equal to 0. So I set the variable factor equal to 0. x plus 3 equals 0. x minus 3 equals 0. And we get x is equal to what? Charlotte? Um, x is equal to 3 and negative 3. 3 and negative 3. Okay, is everybody remembering how we did this? Yeah. All right, so let's pause the recording, and I want you to take a minute and find the solutions to these four problems. All right, now check your work. 1 is negative 7, 4. 2 is negative 3, 0. So on... Just a reminder, um, number three, when I have three factors, again, I'm just setting them all equal to zero. 
and that's three times x equals zero. How do I, how do I solve for it? Divide three. Yep. X equals zero. Yep. And so my solutions are negative four, zero, and one. Okay, questions? All right, the next one, set them both equal. And we get x is equal to five over two and x is equal to zero. It's better if you keep it in fraction, reduced fraction form, than convert to decimals, unless it's a word problem, okay? All right, we're going to skip this one. All right, so something like number five, what might I do first? Do you guys want to take a minute and try and do these on your own? Yeah. Okay, so now we are factoring and then solving for x using zero product property. Pause the recording, do five and six. Okay, let's go with Augie. Good. Factor it completely to good. Perfect. Questions? Okay. Now, what, what kind of function do we call this, by the way? It's to the third power. Is it a quadratic? Third power is a cubic function. Okay, next one. Um, let's go Charlotte. Okay, so I, fact, I, do, I use the x. X marks the spot. Um, x minus 5 and x minus 5. Good. And so I got x equals 5. X minus 5 times x minus 5 equals 0. And you got that x is equal to positive 5. Now, there's only one solution there. Is this correct or wrong? Or, or is it correct or incorrect? Okay, remember, what are we finding? When I solve for my x, what am I really looking for? What are those that we find? There are x-intercepts. So something like this is, is hitting right on one, two, three, four, five. Does that make sense? Okay. So now I've got x squared minus 10x plus 25. Um, oh, yeah, we already did that one. Let's move on. Okay, so now what? What's happening there? Skip this. All right, so now what are we doing here? Jackson. Would you add 45N? Yep, we set it equal to zero, so we're adding 45N. You guys want to try these both? Okay, pause the recording, try the next two. What would I do next in this problem? Uh, Jackson. Um, you factor out 5N. 5N, and I'm left with n squared plus 6n plus 9, which factors to? Uh, n plus 3 squared. n plus 3 times n plus 3. And what are my solutions? Uh, negative 3 and 0. Negative 3 and 0. Questions? All right, next one, what am I doing? Um, how about Jacob Thies? Okay, so first I would get the 49 on the left side, so I would subtract. Good. And then I got 4x cubed minus 49x equals 0. And then I factor it out x. And then we're left with? x times 4x squared minus 49 equals 0. And that breaks down to? I, I stopped right there. Okay. Well, I have 4, I have x squared, and I have 49, and a minus sign in between. What's that called? 
So what, how does it break down, Jacob? X times no, this Jacob. X times 2X minus 7. And? Square. No, that's not how we do a difference of squares. Look at the board. Oh, um, 2X plus 7 times 2X minus 7. Good. Okay. And then my solutions are, I set them all equal. And we should have gotten x equals 0, 2x plus 7, subtract the 7, divide by 2, so it's positive, and negative 7 over 2. Okay, questions there. All right, next one we're going to go to, can I continue? Um, okay, this is the last one of this section. No, two more. All right. So you guys want to try this one. Pause the recording and try the next one. Okay, so we subtract 7x from both sides and 20 from both sides. And what does it factor to? X minus 9 times x plus 5. X minus 9 times x plus 5. And my solutions are? Perfect. Questions? All right. Last one. For 13, section 13.1. So, what do you guys think we do? Jack. Um, do well, the problem is we can't do it yet. Because I can't, what? <laughs> We've got to distribute on both sides and then subtract it all to one side. Okay, so you guys do that now. We're going to double distribute here and then subtract it all to one side. Okay? Do your double distributing and move it over to one side. Pause the recording. All right, so who wants to walk me through it that I haven't heard from? Okay, how about Miles? Okay, um, what'd you get? 2x squared minus 4x minus 4 Minus 4x, when I add those two, it adds to minus 4x. When I put, multiply them, it's minus 12. Minus 4x, minus 12. Okay? And then? And then I move the right side all the way to the left. Move everything here. Why didn't you move all this over to the left? Why didn't you move the, the I'm sorry, the left over to the right? What? He, he didn't want a negative lead coefficient. So I'm subtracting x squared. I'm subtracting 4x. I'm adding 4x. Inverse operation. I'm adding 12. And now we are left with, what is this factor to? Sam? X minus 3 times x minus 4. And my solutions are x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 4. Are there any questions? So my suggestion is you do 13-1 tonight or 13-2 tonight, whatever. If 13-2 is more difficult for you, you can do that tonight and do this one tomorrow night because this is probably easier. For the other kids, you know, I'm hoping that they get this done tonight because, again, 13-2 is a little bit more difficult, not that much more. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, that's it for 13-1.